right, in this video, we're going to examine rotations in plane space. And in order to complete this video successfully, you will need your compass and straight edge. So if you don't have those handy, pause the video while you go retrieve your compass and your straight edge. First of all, just a reminder that a rotation is a rigid motion that's going to turn some figure about a fixed point. And the vocab word for that fixed point that we're turning about is called the center of rotation. So a couple of key ideas that are going on right there in that sentence is that a rotation is a turn. We're turning around that center point called the center of rotation. So those are important vocab words to know. Now think about a sweatshirt. If I take a sweatshirt that says Sutherland across the front and I turn it or rotate it, the Sutherland doesn't change the orientation. It's not backwards. So that tells me that the rotation is a direct isometry, meaning that both the distances are preserved as well as the orientation. Not all points in a figure travel the same distance under a rotation. And I'm going to show you what that means when we look at the figure A, B, C, D, E down below. Another important fact to know is that anybody that's at the center of the rotation is going to remain fixed, or in other words, remain invariant, or not travel anywhere under the rotation. So points, the center of rotation is the, going to be the only point in the image that's not going to travel in, anywhere. And again, I'll show you a little bit more about what that means as we get into the rotation. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to determine the angle about which a figure is rotated. And in order to do that, let's go ahead and take a look at figure A, B, C, D. And if you look at the picture, you can see the turn that's going on is A, B, C, D is rotated to form the image A, B, C, D prime. Now here's what I want you to notice. Figure A, or sorry, point A, starts out up here, ends up down here. So the distance that he travels is represented by that green arc. Point D, on the other hand, starts at D and ends at D. Because he is the center of our rotation, he doesn't travel at all. C starts up here, ends up down here. So again, he travels along that purple arc. So again, notice that points A and C travel much further than point D, which doesn't travel at all under this particular rotation. All right, so let's go determine the angle. The angle of the rotation is going to be pretty, I think, pretty simple to find. And the way that I'm going to find it is I'm going to use my straight edge and I'm going to connect the center to point A and connect the center to point A prime. The angle that's formed when I connect the center to point A and the center to point A prime is my angle of rotation. So that red angle in there, my angle of rotation. Now notice that I could do the same thing for point C and C prime. So I'm going to connect those using a dotted or a dashed line. So I'm going to connect my center to point C and my center of rotation to its image, which is point C prime. And notice that the angle that's obtained there is exactly the same as that original angle. So it's going to be exactly the same measure. And we could do the same thing for B and B prime, and we'd end up with the same angle. So the steps that you're going to use in order to approximate the angle of rotation, so steps, I would say connect the center, which is D, to A prime. Sorry, I would do A first. Connect D again, which is the center, to A prime. And this could really be any point in its image. You'll end up with the same angle no matter which points you pick. And lastly, measure the angle by the line segments and steps two and three, sorry, one and two. So if I were to approximate this angle measure, I'm going to get out my colors here just to be a little bit more specific. This was my first angle. 
he looks to be a little bit less than 90. So I would say he's approximately 80 degrees. And it's important to notice the direction that this traveled. This traveled 80 degrees in a clockwise direction. And again, without a protractor, it's just an approximation. All right, so that's the first objective that you need to be able to accomplish from this video. You need to be able to find the angle of rotation. The second um, objective that you need to be able to accomplish is to be able to find the center of rotation. And I'm going to be a little bit more specific here using a construction. So if I notice the original image here, A, B, or sorry, that M, and then its image, which is the dotted after some rotation, I notice that point A, of course, maps on to point A prime. Point B is traveled in some arc or rotated in some way, such that it matches on to B prime. So the first thing I notice about this is that the rotation itself is going to be a counterclockwise rotation. But what they're asking us to do is they're asking us to find the center of this rotation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start by using my straight edge and I'm going to connect any point in the pre-image with its corresponding point in the image. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to connect point A with point A prime. And then I'm going to do the same thing but for a second point in the image in the pre-image. So I'm going to take my straight edge and I'm going to connect B with B prime. Now I chose to use A and A prime and B and B prime because they're labeled, but I really could have connected any point with its corresponding point uh, in the image. So the first thing, if I'm doing steps here, use a straight edge to join or connect. And point B and B prime. I don't know why I said join and rope joint. So I'm going to go back and fix that. So use my straight edge to join A with A prime and join B with B prime. So now I've got two line segments. My second step is going to be to construct the perpendicular bisector of each of those line segments that I drew in step one. So in order to do that, I'm going to need to grab my compass. So I'm going to drag my compass. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to construct the perpendicular bisector of A, A prime to start with. So there's my perpendicular bisector of segment A, A prime. And then the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to construct the perpendicular bisector of my other line segment, B, B prime. And since my first pair of arcs didn't quite crisscross, I'm going to have to go back and fix it and make it right. Let me go back and try that again. Ah, there we go. That looks so much better. And again, I'll grab my straight edge, finish up that perpendicular bisector. 
And then the center of rotation is simply going to be the spot where those two perpendicular bisectors intersect. So this is something simply a construction that utilizes that perpendicular bisector construction that we've done over and over and over. All right, as always, I want you to, in your own words, go ahead and summarize the key import, uh, key ideas and the important takeaways from this video. And then in number two, find the center of rotation. That's going to be using a construction. And then in number three, go ahead and see if you can approximate the angle of rotation.